This is a Bible story for September 2014. We're going to start in Exodus 39, verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and over all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in his house, in the house, and in the field. Verse 6, And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not all he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Verse 7, And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master wouldeth not what is with me in the house. And he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. Verse 9. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened unto her to lie with her or to be with her and it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business and there was none of the men of the house there within and she caught him by his garment saying lie with me and he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out and it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he hath brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass, when he heard that I had lifted up my voice and cried out, that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me, and fled out. And it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. Verse 20 And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. 
the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he did the Lord made it to prosper okay let's summarize what took place in this particular story in Exodus 39 verse 1 it talked about Joseph being captured by some Arabs which they refer to as Ishmaelites and he was brought down to an Egyptian master and this particular Egyptian master saw that uh, Joseph was favored by the creator and so he wanted some favoritism done for his particular kingdom so he placed Joseph in charge of the kingdom so Joseph enjoyed the responsibilities that he had in his kingdom and he took a uh, very good care of master's house you know like most good house niggas do but anyway everything that was left uh, into Joseph's hand it prospered and so master's wife couldn't keep her eyes or her hands off of Joseph so she kept on badgering him and sweet talking him and smelling good for him and all this type of stuff and then finally uh, if you look in verse uh, 7 or 8 it talks about um, she kept casting her eyes upon Joseph and, and uh, she wanted him to lie with her right so uh Joseph finally hearkened unto a voice. You know, that's talking about uh, the fact that he was beguiled by her. And, you know, day after day, which you can see in verse 10. And he hearkened unto her. That means he listened to what she had to say to lie with her. Well, the, the script says to lie by her or to be with her. Okay, so... It really doesn't indicate that he actually had sex with her, but it does seem to indicate that he, you know, just laid down with her, whatever the case may be. So I guess that wasn't enough for her. So it was like the next time that she saw Joseph, she uh, grabbed his garment. And Joseph didn't want no more to do with that because he didn't want to ruin his position in Pharaoh's house. So he uh, he ran off. And so then this chick, she turns around, she lied on Joseph saying that he came in and, and tried to push himself up on her. And when her husband got there, who was Joseph's master, she told him, and he got angry, so he threw Joseph in prison. But what I wanted to, to deal with here is the fact that, you know, the, the situation is that even though Joseph was honest with Master and uh, tried to do a good job for Master, Master wasn't hearing it because uh master's wife told him something contrary to what Joseph was telling him. So the master believed his wife and cast Joseph in the prison. But what I want to deal with here is a uh, uh, captured in verse nine, where it talks about uh Joseph saying to uh to master's wife that there's none greater than me in this house. Why should I, uh, you know, do this thing with you and uh, commit this great wickedness? Then he said, and sin against God. So he separated the wickedness from the sin against God. Here I read it again. Verse 9, it says, There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee. 
because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness, comma, and sin against God? Okay. He didn't say that the wickedness was the sin, which would have been, you know, laying with the woman. But he said, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So it was two different things taking place at the same instance. And let's clarify that. Okay, so let's define wickedness. Wickedness is a noun. And it is the quality or state of being wicked. So we need to find out what wicked is. And wicked is defined as such. Evil or moral wrong. So this thing that he was contemplating doing, which uh, he almost carried through with uh, the first time that he laid down with the woman, but nevertheless, uh, he didn't follow through because he perceived it as being an evil or moral wrong. But now when you get into the sin part of it, which it's talking about in verse 9, it says, and sin against God. Okay, so we already defined in a previous um, story, we, we already defined what sin is, but we can do it again. According to the Bible, sin is the transgression of the law. So what law are we talking about now? Uh, the master had laid forth the law because uh, Joseph already declared that uh, he was the greatest in the house, right? And Master hasn't kept back anything from him but the woman, right? And so now uh, that's the law that was set down by Master, not to touch the woman. So the transgression of that law would be to go and touch the woman, okay? But he referred to it as being a sin against God. Okay, so now they're trying to inter intermingle Lord and God, right? Because sometimes they talk about Lord. Sometimes they talk about God. So pretty much all of us are familiar with some type of Lord, whether it be a landlord or whatever kind of Lord it is, right? So now, isn't Pharaoh or master the landlord, right? And so, is this man like a god to Joseph? Or which god are they talking about here? A sin against God, right? Is, is, is this man looked upon as being a god to some ones? And is that what he's referring to? Because you got to also remember that sin is the transgression of the law. Another lesson here that should be learned is that Men, you got to stay away from these women that's uh, coming on to you all the time because eventually you're going to get weak. I don't care, you know, uh, uh, how much you love your woman or whatever the case may be. Uh, this woman is going to mess around and catch you at a bad time or at a time when you're vulnerable and you may give in to her like Joseph did. Now, it doesn't really say that Joseph slept with the woman, but uh, I'm thinking that he he probably did. And he repented from that and didn't want to deal with it no more. But nevertheless, as you can see in the uh, last couple of verses, that uh, God still favored this Joseph. You know, even though he laid with the woman or whatever the case may be, he was still favored by the creator. Okay, so therefore, uh, whatever he did was a wickedness or whatever the case may be, or sin, that was only in the eyes of men, and not in the eyes of the Creator. So that's the point I wanted to make on that. And to finish my point uh, concerning the fact that these women come on to you, in the case of Joseph just now, uh, remember, he was brought down into the land of Egypt, okay? He was brought there by the Arabs, which... Arabs have primarily been responsible for our captivity from day one, as you can already see. But nevertheless, uh, he was brought down in, into Egypt, so therefore, he was a Hebrew, and they were Egyptians, and they were different people. So the point that I'm making is that these women from a different people is coming on to you, 
And you have to watch out for that because they after something. You know, like uh, Lauren, Lauren Hill said, uh, they after that thing, right? So, and then they, they after it's so tough to, if they get a piece of it, then they don't know how to quit. So they go through any length to, uh, uh, to get you to succumb to their wishes. And this is what we see prevalent in many different areas in this land that we live upon uh, that people refer to as the United States, but it's really a lot of different other original names. But I'm not going to get into that right now. The point being is that you got to watch out for these females from other nationalities or, or other people or, as the script put it, a people that's not a people, okay? And they they after these melanin-dominant men that in the script is referred to as Hebrews or, or you know, we call them Asiatics. But the bottom line is they're Moors. So Moors, women of them other nationalities, just like the prophet said in the oral statements, it was written, Bruh, old Peyton Bay of Temple 4 and 25 said, the Holy Prophet said, one day your biggest trouble won't be getting with European women. It will be fighting them off. Don't get it twisted. This ain't something new that, you know, you see Europeans running around with Asiatics. They've been doing it since the time of, uh, of Joseph, just like it was depicted uh, in this story. Nevertheless, you know, the ones that's over there in Egypt now, are a fair-skinned so-called people that you know some some of them may have even have a, a European complexion, but don't don't get it twisted. They still are different people, and the prophet also said, "Don't amalgamate." Look that up. I'm not going to do it for you. Maybe in some future story that I tell, I define what amalgamation is. But keep that in mind as you go forward. Until the next time, peace. Hey everybody, thanks for visiting my channel. This is Malik the Sheik. Uh, if this content has been informative or edifying for you and you appreciate what's being brought to you, please help to continue this purpose and this cause by making a donation. The donation will be going toward the Build a Nation Foundation. You can find a link associated with this video and please use that link to make your donations as soon as you can afford. Thank you very much for your patronage, and please show your support. Peace.